Hello friends. Today in this lecture we will discuss about pi bonding in octahedral complexes. There are two types of ligands which can form pi bond with metal atom or metal ion. So there are two kinds of ligands that may be sigma and pi donor. So this is one category of ligands that can form pi bond with the metal ion. And these includes ligands like F minus, Cl minus, OH minus, CO32 minus, other halides, etc. And other uh, pi uh, the ligands which can form pi bond, they include sigma donor, pi donor, as well as pi acceptor ligands. Pi acceptor. So this category, uh, these ligands, they have empty antibonding molecular orbitals so that they can accept electrons in these empty anti-bonding molecular orbitals and these ligands include cyanide, carbonyl, nitrosyl, etc. ligands. A four-step process illustrates the application of LFT in pi bonding in these complexes. So these four-step process include number one step is classification of metal orbitals. So classification of metal orbitals according to sigma and pi symmetry. So which orbital can participate in pi bonding with ligand orbitals. So there are we have already classified six metal orbitals that are E1g, Eg and T1u. These we have already divided into sigma bonding orbitals. So they are sigma symmetric orbitals. Now the orbitals which can form pi bond with the ligand orbitals they are grouped under T2g and T1u symmetry. So these are the orbitals which can participate in pi bonding with the ligands. So now second step is formation of LGOs. So what are the LGOs which can form pi bonding with the metal orbitals. So as there are 12 ligand orbitals. So there are 12 ligand orbitals. 12 ligand orbitals which can participate in pi bonding. How? Because there are six ligands in octahedral complex. So these six ligands will have 18 p orbitals. Out of these 18 p orbitals, six have already selected for sigma bonding. So remaining 12 orbitals, they will participate in pi bonding and these can be classified as these 12 ligand orbitals they can be classified as T1u, T2u, T1g and T2g. So ligand T2g orbital can have similar symmetry as that of metal T2g orbital and ligand T1u orbitals they can have similar symmetry as that of T1u. So these can take part in pi bonding while this will remain as non-bonding because there is no such symmetry orbitals with the metal orbitals. So now these pi orbitals can be selected accordingly. So if we recall 
the sigma bonding in octahedral complexes and if it is z this is y and this is x axis and this is l1 l2 l3 l4 and this is l5 and l6 so six orbitals directing towards this x axis y axis and z axis they have also already been involved in sigma bonding so those orbitals are those orbitals are those orbitals are sigma 1 x sigma 2 x sigma 3 x sigma 4 x sigma uh, so oh, sorry this is sigma 1 x sigma 2 x sigma 3 y sigma 4 y sigma 5 z and sigma 6 z so these orbitals this is uh, the six orbitals they are involved in sigma bonding so now with this l1 ligand two or two p orbitals they remained as such so those orbitals they can form pi bond with the ligand so they will be pi 1 y and pi 1 z because this x already it have been um, involved in sigma bonding so y and z will remain as such so pi 1 y and pi 1 z they will be involved in pi bonding likewise here in case of l2 the orbitals 2y and pi 2z they will involved in pi bonding these two orbitals these two orbitals then in case of this l6 sigma 6z already have been participated in sigma bonding but the remaining orbital is sigma 6x and pi 6y so these two orbitals they will involved in pi bonding so likewise we can uh, summarize these orbitals in a table so if we see these are the ligands there are six ligands so l1 l2 l3 l4 l5 and l6 so the orbitals that can form sigma bond so these are p sigma orbitals and that can form pi bond they are p pi orbitals so we can classify likewise this is sigma 1 x this is sigma 2 x then sigma 3 y then sigma 4 y then sigma 5 z sigma 6 z so these are involved in sigma bonding so remaining one with this l1 ligand the remaining orbitals are pi 1 z and pi 1 y with this l2 pi 2 z and pi 2 y we can see that x was involved in uh, sigma bonding so z and y will be remain for pi bonding in case of l3 because i was involved y is involved in sigma bonding so the remaining orbitals are pi 3 z and pi 3 x in case of 4 pi 4 z and pi 4 x they will remain for pi bonding in, in this case z orbitals they are involved in um, the sigma bonding so the remaining orbitals are pi 5 x and pi 5 y they can form pi bond pi 6 x and pi 6 y they can involve in pi bonding so in this way there are 12 LDOs, 12 ligand orbitals which can now combine and form LGOs.
they can form LGOs and these LGOs they can then overlap with the uh, orbitals of metal having the similar symmetry same symmetry to form molecular orbitals Now, what are the LGOs uh, that can be diagrammatically, diagrammatically represented as for dxy orbital? What will be the LGO? So, the orbital will be in between this x and y axis. In this axis, there is L1 ligand, L2 ligand. L3 ligand and L4 ligand. So the LGO that can combine with the DZ orbital and uh, DXY orbital of ligand uh, of metal, the LGO is like look like this. So if we see, we can um, give with the help of filling off these orbitals this is the y and this is the positive lobe of this p orbital and this is the positive lobe of this orbital this is the positive lobe and this is the positive lobe of this so this is the lgo this is lgo which can overlap with the dxy orbital of metal in sideways fashion to form molecular orbitals so now the normalization factor for this orbital LGO is equals to so the orbital which is taking part in this this orbital is 1 y direction is in y so this is pi 1 y and this is pi 2 y this orbital is in x direction so this is pi 3 x and this orbital is pi 4 x and we can see that the this positive pole of one orbital and positive pole of the other orbital they are on the opposite side so we can give the normalization wave function of sigma x y as 1 upon 2 pi 1 y positive on one side minus positive on the other side so minus pi 2 y plus pi 3 x positive lobe at this side and positive lobe at this side so negative sign pi 3 x minus pi 4 x so this will be the normalized wave function or for this LGO then second LGO is the LGO that can combine with the DYZ orbital of metal so if this is Y and this is Z direction then the orbital the ligand group orbital which is going to overlap with this dyz orbital this can be shown like this now now this is l3 this is l4 this is l5 and this is l6 now this direction is z so this orbital will be pi 3 z this is again z this orbital is pi 4 z orbital this or this direction is y so this is pi 6 y and this is pi 5 y so normalized wave function for 
dy z orbital is equal to 1 upon 2 pi 3 z minus pi 4 z plus pi 5 y minus pi 6 y. So this is the orbital which can overlap with the dyz orbital of metal to form molecular orbital. Then the third orbital is dzx. So again in case of dxz orbital the normalized wave function will become 1 upon 2 pi 1 z minus pi 2 z plus pi 5 x minus pi 6 x. The LGOs which can overlap with the p orbitals of metal orbital these can be explained as follows so the LGO which can overlap with the px orbital with the px orbital of metal so this is x direction this is y and this is z so px orbital can overlap with the all the orbitals which are directed toward x direction so these are the orbitals which are directed towards x direction so this will form lgo so this is the lgo which involved the orbitals with x direction orbital so this is pi 3x this is pi 4x this is pi 6x and this is pi 5x so its normalization wave function becomes 1 upon 2 pi 3x plus pi 4x plus pi 5x plus pi 6x you can see that all the x directed orbitals p orbitals of or lgos they will participate in bonding with px orbital so likewise the orbitals that are oriented towards y direction they will form the uh, pi bond with the py orbital so we can give the normalized wave function of that orbital also so that orbital has a normalized wave function of 1 upon 2 now the orbitals in the y direction so these are pi 1y plus pi 2y plus pi 5y plus pi 6y so this will be the normalized wave function for the LGO that is going to overlap with the py orbital then the third LGO will have the normalized wave function of sigma z so that will equals to 1 upon 2 pi 1 z plus pi 2 z plus pi 3 z plus pi 4 z so this will be the normalized wave function for the LGO that will going to overlap with the pz or now in the third step the dxy dyz and dzx of metal ion of octahedral complex having the same symmetry, same symmetry as that of ligand pi group orbitals they will overlap hence dxy of metal linearly combined with sigma xy lgo dyz with 
सिग्मा वाई जेड एल जी ओ एंड डी एक्स जेड विद सिग्मा जेड एक्स एल जी ओ टू फॉर्म पाई बॉन्डिंग मॉलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल एज वेल एज पाई एंटी बॉन्डिंग मॉलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल एंड लाइक वाइज पी एक्स पी वाई एंड पी जेड ऑर्बिटल ऑफ मेटल दे पार्शियली कम्बाइन विद सिग्मा एक्स सिग्मा वाई एंड सिग्मा जेड ऑर्बिटल्स ऑफ एल जी ओज टू फॉर्म बॉन्डिंग मोलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल्स एंड एंटी बॉन्डिंग मोलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल्स सो नाउ द मोलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल्स दैट आर फॉर्म्ड बाय दीज डिफरेंट ओवरलैप्स दीज आर एज फॉलोज सो इन दिस डायग्राम वी आर गोइंग टू ड्रॉ द बॉन्डिंग मोलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल्स bonding pi bonding molecular orbitals so this central orbital this is dx y this is x and this is y so this is dx y orbital and when it combined with the lgo sigma x y lgo this is this will be the bonding molecular orbitals this is bmo this is pi bonding This is sideways overlapping. Likewise, anti-bonding molecular orbital will also be formed. So this is the formation of anti-bonding molecular orbital. So this is anti-bonding molecular orbital. We can see. This is positive negative overlap, and this is sideways overlap. So this is A B M O. So when two orbitals they combine, one end one is D X Y and other is L G O. They will combine to form one B M O and one A B M O. So likewise, all the three orbitals they can combine and form molecular orbitals D X Y. can form bmo and abmo then dyz likewise it can form abmo and bmo and dyz it can again form abmo and bmo so there will be this will react with and uh, also an overlap with the sigma xy to form these two orbitals then dyz this can combine with sigma yz lgo and this will combine with sigma zx zx to form one bmo and other abmo then uh, the px pyz Uh, px py and pz orbitals they will also linearly combine with the sigma x lgo sigma y lgo and sigma z lgo they they combine partially like this so if this is x direction this is px orbital of metal so this is px metal orbital then it will overlap like this this is the lgo which can overlap with the sideways overlapping so this is bmo and likewise formation of abmo will take place and likewise py and pz they will also form pi bond with sigma y lgo and sigma z lgo so the fourth step in the pi bonding in octahedral complexes is construction of moed that is molecular orbital energy level diagram so in the construction of molecular orbital energy di diagram sigma mo's will be formed same as given in the previous lecture sigma bonding that is a1g then t1u 
and eg orbitals they are involved in sigma bonding now these three uh, six orbitals of matter and six lgos six lgos that are sigma s sigma xy sigma sigma x sigma y sigma z sigma z square and sigma x square y square these lgos they can combine with the six atomic orbitals of matter and they can form 12 molecular orbitals six vmos and six a vmos the three orbitals dxy dyz and dzx they remain as such they will act as uh, they act as uh, the non-bonding molecular orbital in the sigma bonding but now those three t2g orbitals they also participate in pi bonding so now they don't remain non-bonding in this moed so now out of 12 values so there are 12 values t1g t2g t1u and t2u so there are 12 lgos so out of these 12 lgos t1u and t2g these will combine with the metal t2g orbital and metal t1u orbital to form bmos and abmos and six LGOs will remain as such and that six LGOs they include T1G and T2U they will remain non-bonding in the complexes having ligands like Cl minus F minus OH minus which are pi donor as well as sigma donor ligands the order of energy level of atomic orbitals and LGOs are in this order sigma LGOs have the lowest energy then pi LGOs then n minus 1 d orbitals then n s orbitals then n p orbitals so this is the order of energy of different orbitals of metal and ligand now construction of molecular orbital energy level diagram so in this construction this is the 3d orbital of metal this is ns orbital of metal and this is np orbital of metal so again we have classified previously this is t2g plus eg orbital this is a1g and this is T1 U. Now there are two orbitals. This is ligand 6 sigma LGOs. Then above this there are 12 pi LGOs. So these 6 sigma LGOs they can interact with metal orbital this. A1G and T1U. Then they can form A1G plus T1U plus EG bonding orbitals. Okay. Then T1U anti bonding molecular orbital having the highest energy. Then a1g orbital that is anti-bonding orbital so these are generated from here okay then there are three orbitals generally they sometimes remain as such t1u 
is also one of them partially. So we can show that T1 U, T2 G and T2 U. They will remain as such. So these three orbitals they remain non-bonding. These orbitals will include T1 U, T2 U plus T1 G plus T2 G. So out of these T1 U, T2 U and T1 G they remain as such. T1 U sometimes partially participate in pi bonding and the remaining they will uh, the orbitals T2 U, T1 G they will also remain as such and this T2 G will participate in bonding. And this T2 G is now participating in pi bonding. So this is T2 G. T2 G star. This is anti bonding molecular orbital. T2 G now it is participating bonding and this T2 G which was non bonding in previous case it is now participating in bonding. So this is anti bonding molecular orbital and this is T2 G bonding molecular orbital. So this uh, we have shown only T2 G orbital to be participated in bonding. Sometimes in uh, some books T1 U is also used in participating in pi bonding in octahedral complexes. Sometimes we can show this T1 U to form anti bonding or bonding molecular orbital and sometimes we can show it. Now filling of electrons in these molecular orbitals it can be uh, understand by considering an example of Se F6. So we can consider an example of Fe F6 3 minus. So in this case, Fe its valential configuration Fe3 it becomes 3D5. So 5 electrons of metal and 12 electrons of ligand. So total electrons are 17 electrons. So we have to fill these 17 electrons plus there are 24 electrons in pi bonded orbitals of ligand. These are sigma ligands and these are pi ligands. So now the total electrons they becomes 17 plus 24 that are 41. So total number of electrons are 41 which are to be filled in the molecular orbitals. So we can see that in this case the lowest energy orbitals are A1G, T1U and EG. These are 6 orbitals. So 12 electrons can be accommodated in these 6 bonding orbitals. Then there are 4 orbitals, uh, 4 groups of orbitals T1U, T2G, T2U and T2G, T1G. So these 4 groups they are of lower energy. This is bonding and these are non-bonding molecular orbitals. So again these are 12 orbitals. So 24 electrons they can fill in the, these orbitals. So we can see that now we can write the electronic configuration for this uh, electron, these electrons that are 41 electrons. So these are A1G2 T1U6 then EG6 then T2G6 T1G6 T1U6 
सिक्स टी टू यू सिक्स सो दीज थ्री आर बॉन्डिंग मोलिकल ऑर्बिटल दिस इज ऑल्सो बॉन्डिंग मोलिकल ऑर्बिटल दीज थ्री ऑर्बिटल दे आर नॉन बॉन्डिंग मोलिकल ऑर्बिटल एंड ऑल दीज ऑर्बिटल्स दे आर हैविंग लिगेंड प्रॉपर्टी सो दीज आर लिगेंड ऑर्बिटल्स टोटल नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स यू कैन सी दैट सिक्स ऑर्बिटल एंड ट्वेल्व ऑर्बिटल टोटल ऑर्बिटल्स आर सिक्स प्लस ट्वेल्व इज इक्वल टू एटीन ऑर्बिटल सो दे कैन अकोमोडेट टोटल थर्टी सिक्स इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एंड दीज आर द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स ऑफ लिगेंड वी कैन रिमेंबर दैट ईच लिगेंड इज हैविंग थ्री पी ऑर्बिटल देर आर सिक्स लिगेंड तो टोटल देर आर एटीन पी ऑर्बिटल इन एटीन पी ऑर्बिटल दे आर हैविंग थर्टी सिक्स इलेक्ट्रॉन्स सो ऑल द थर्टी सिक्स इलेक्ट्रॉन्स ऑफ लिगेंड और प्रॉपर्टी लिगेंड्स दे आर एंट्रिंग टू द मोलिकुलर ऑर्बिटल्स हैविंग लिगेंड प्रॉपर्टी नाउ द फाइव इलेक्ट्रॉन्स ऑफ मेटल द फाइव इलेक्ट्रॉन्स ऑफ मेटल दे कैन बी फिल्ड इन टू दिस टी टू जी ऑर्बिटल और दिस ई जी ऑर्बिटल दे कैन फिल्ड इन टू ई जी ऑर्बिटल और टी टू जी ऑर्बिटल सो ई जी ऑर्बिटल फॉर प्रोटन दिस देर विल बी ई जी ऑर्बिटल इन दिस सिग्मा ऑर्बिटल दिस इज ई जी स्टार सो नाउ दीज टू ऑर्बिटल्स दे आर हैविंग मेटल प्रॉपर्टी सो नाउ दीज इलेक्ट्रॉन्स दे कैन फिल इन टू दिस टी टू जी ऑर्बिटल और ई जी ऑर्बिटल एंड दिस डिपेंड्स अपॉन डिफरेंस बिटवीन दीज टू ऑर्बिटल सो इफ द डिफरेंट इज इज लेस देन इलेक्ट्रॉन विल गो टू ई जी इन दिस मीन्स टी टी टू जी थ्री इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एंड ई जी टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स सो इफ डिफरेंस इज लेस After this, five electrons are to be filled. These five electrons will go to the T two G star and E G star. Uh, now that will depend upon the difference between T two G and E G. If the difference is less, then the the complex will be high spin complex. And the, if this difference is high, if this gap is high, then this is the a uh, low spin complex so in case of due to lower gap between these two states the ligand is because the ligands are weak ligands so this will give rise to high spin complex and the electrons will go in the t2g and eg orbitals like this t2g Star three and E G star two. So this will be the electronic configuration of molecular orbitals of FeF six three negative, like uh, such as A one G two, T one U six, E G six, T two G six, T one G six, T one U six, T two U six, T two G three star and T two G E G star two. So this will be the electronic configuration. For the complex Fe F six three negative.